Okay, well, welcome back folks. As you can tell, out here in the shop, I could probably put that on a t-shirt by now. I say it so much, but I'm out here for a reason. That's because I have a new project that I'm going to show you guys, and hopefully I'm going to get accomplished either today or if the weather cooperates, at least by the end of tomorrow. What that project is, is involving this barrel. And this barrel is uh, nothing fancy. It's just, uh, just a 55 gallon drum that I'm going to use to fill with concrete to provide ballast for my tractor. Now why you ask you need ballast is because when I'm out using my loader, sometimes I pick up loads and it lifts the back tires. So I'm gonna get some ballast in the form of concrete, fill up that uh, big 55 gallon drum, and according to my math, that should give me somewhere around 960 pounds of ballast. Now I could fill the rear tires of my tractor and maybe we'll go out and have a look at it. So here we are. I could fill the rear tires of this tractor, but I called around and to be honest with you, it's probably going to cost me anywhere from seven to nine hundred dollars Canadian. And that's a little, uh, little out of the budget right now. Instead of that, by putting the concrete on the back, I get the same weight, but I get a fraction of the price. I think that barrel along with the concrete and the drawbar I had to buy, I think it's coming out to less than a hundred bucks Canadian. So. That's what I'm up against. I have the tractor pulled in here because I was trying to figure out the height I need for the three-point hitch to mount up correctly. And from what I gather and from what my other implements show, the distance from the draw bar, so you can see it's way down on the ground here, but the draw bar would be right here. The distance from there up to where about the top link goes and all my other implements is right around 19 or 20 inches. And so that's the math or that's the figure rather that I'm gonna use in laying out my barrel. So that's what I'm up against today. I'm trying to get that barrel laid out so I can insert my draw bar and then ultimately fill with concrete. We got a few good days coming where I'm not gonna have this toque on and that's why I'm trying to get this all set up. Because if you can imagine, I think I've got 12 or 14 66 pound bags of concrete. When I pour that into that barrel, it's gonna take a few days to dry. So that's why I'm hoping on the good weather. Anyways, let's head on in here. <clears throat> and you guys can see what we're dealing with. So this little girl here, this piece of steel, this draw bar, this is just your standard category one draw bar. This is what goes on my Coyote. Uh, nothing fancy about this thing. I picked this up at Princess Auto, which I think it's equivalent to the American Harbor Freight. So not the most expensive item, but uh, for this job, it's gonna do just fine. That is going to be inserted into the barrel. And if I can one-handedly... If I can one-handedly get this up here, you guys can see the slot that I started making for the draw bar to go into. So that 19 or 20 inch figure, that number that I said is from the three-point hitch draw bar up to where most top links are. That figure is essentially going to bring me from the draw bar up to about here for my top link. The reason I want the top link to stick up a little bit higher than the barrel is so when I'm lifting that barrel up, I don't hit the draw bar on the side of this thing and bend it. From what I gather and from what some of you guys have told me and the internet has told me, if you don't get this figure, this, this distance correct, and you don't get the draw bar up high enough, you'll be sitting in your tractor. You'll pull on the lever to lift the three-point hitch. You probably won't even notice, but you'll bend your top link. So that's some figuring I had to do just to make sure that's going to work. So what I'm going to do right now is I have to lay out that on the other side. I'm going to cut it out and I'm going to cut it out with uh, with this thing. This is a uh, oscillating tool. That blade goes back and forth. I tend to use this for doing uh, interior woodworking, trim work and such. So I'm going to use that to make that little, uh, little slot here. And for those of you who want to know the size of that slot, it's two and a half inches by one inch high. Same size as the draw bar. Then I'll test fit it, make sure it's gonna fit in there fine. And then I have to figure out some sort of steel <clears throat> to weld on to the top of here to go upwards that 19 or 20 inches I need to accept the top link. You guys get all that? I don't even think I got it straight, but that's what we're up against. Gonna do a bit of cutting, bit of welding, bit of grinding, and then some slugging. Cause we gotta fill this thing with concrete. Wanna make sure everything's in place. You only get one pour. And if I pour it wrong, well, this no longer becomes a functional ballast. This ends up becoming a pain in my rear end. So 
welcome aboard guys glad you're here and let's go Here's day two. All the welding's done and I'm about to show you that in just a second here. What you see behind you is all the concrete. So this is going in that barrel today. So day two is probably not going to be as fun, but nonetheless, it'll get done. Let's have a look at the welding. So this is the barrel overall. As you guys can see, the drawbar goes all the way through it. You guys would have seen that last time. Up here, this was some of the welding that I did and you guys just saw that. I had to make some additions or some extra little cuts and one I made was right here. That way the top link can pivot a little bit so it doesn't hit the very top here. I don't know exactly how high the concrete's going to come up this barrel. My estimate is it should come just below the brim. If it does well, then I can cut it down to that level. If it doesn't, I got the little notch to allow for that pivoting of the top link. Looking a little bit more closely at the welding going on here. What you guys are seeing here is the drawbar. I welded a piece of two inch or I think that's one by one tubing. A quarter inch wall welded that to the draw bar up here I have two pieces of angle iron put a hole through it that's the uh, hole the one inch hole I think it is for the top link pin and in order to stiffen this up even further I put this extra piece of angle which welds down both sides of the angle and sort of holds it together and as you guys can see creates a bit of a bit of a hollow there for the top link to uh, position into or slide into rather so really a solid unit there that's what's going to get filled in with concrete and uh some of those welds i haven't even knocked the slag off but that's as good as i can do for my welding anyways so as you guys can see the water is just about taking off and spraying me i don't know why i better shut her down but uh we're gonna get that concrete put in there and uh that's the name of the game today so fingers crossed my back holds up and uh we get this thousand pound barrel of concrete done before long so here we go
this in the concrete. I'm just going to show you guys what this is here. It's basically a piece of angle iron, and I took some grade 70 chain. I think it's grade 70, the good strong stuff. I weld the chain to the, the uh, what do you call it there, angle iron. What I'm going to do is I'm going to position it down into the concrete, and I'll put some boards just to hold it up as the pour settles. And uh, what this is going to do is give me a spot to pick up the barrel, because if you pick up from this point right here, it's not centered and if it's not centered when you pick it up it's going to want to swing and so i'm going to center this with some wood bury that down in the concrete and that'll give me a good spot to lift up from if i ever wanted to move it around with something other than the three-point hitch Well guys, that's going to do it for me here today. That job there, not overly glamorous, but it did take me about two hours. It wasn't all that hard. As you saw, I used a wheelbarrow and a rake. I don't have any fancy contraption here to make concrete because I don't make it a lot. What you saw in front of you was 14 bags of concrete. Those are 66 pound bags, which brings your total up to 924. I think I had it. 924, I think, uh, pounds of concrete if you do the math. That's 420 kilograms. So this mixed in with the steel and everything else you're probably sitting somewhere around 980 or 1000 pounds of concrete this is a 55 gallon plastic drum if you wanted to see what 14 bags of 66 pound per bag concrete looks like well you're looking at it as you can see here this is how high the, the chains are going to stick out of the unit this chain as you saw is hooked to that piece of angle iron this will give me a good spot to loop onto if i ever have to move this with something other than the three-point hitch down here as you can see, looking at a side view, this is probably in the first third. If you can imagine half third, it's probably in the front third of the barrel. Some people I've seen put it halfway. Well, not me. As you can tell, it's right there. So that sticks out there on both sides. That's a category one draw bar. Pretty typical. I also put this piece of wood here. Don't laugh at the little barrel, but I put this piece of wood here to keep the channel open. And that channel I cut out and that's where the draw bar will get some articulation, some up and down motion. And I wanted to make sure it doesn't fill in with concrete. As you can see, there's the hole. That's where the pin goes through for the draw bar. And if this cures up, hopefully before, uh, well, before a week's up, then I'll be laughing. But tractor's sitting there. That's going to be the next thing moving it because this thing, if nothing else, is one heck of a big piece of, uh, I don't know, big piece of concrete. So this will act as a great tractor ballast for me. Anyways, if you guys have any questions, put it on down below. Appreciate all you guys sharing your opinions with me, your experiences, so that I can learn from this project. Take it on to the next one. Guys, thanks for watching. Come on back next time, and I'll see you then.